PDF document enhancement options can be found by selecting the settings option in the MIDM. There you'll immediately find a zoom slider that you can either tap or slide to incrementally increase the zoom level of the document. Depending on the zoom level selected, it can take a while for this to apply to the document you're looking at. However, give the device a moment or two and it will eventually get to it. In case you're wondering, yes, the zoom level selected holds across all pages of the document, so you don't need to go and reset it, which is a definite plus. If manual zoom control isn't your thing, the Inkpad X also offers up a few different presets to choose from. These are located immediately above the aforementioned zoom bar and include fit to width, fit page, column view, and reflow modes. Fit to width tries, as the name implies, to fit your document to the width of the screen. While this mode does a pretty good job of accomplishing that, it doesn't totally eliminate the extra margin spaces to either side of the document. You can always further zoom in manually to crack this, but given the slower refresh rate, it can be hard to get it just right. If that's an issue for your use case, don't fret, as I'll come to perhaps my favorite mode in just a moment. Fit to page, as you might imagine, fits a single page to the device's screen. This is great, but it can make the text quite a bit harder to read as everything appears smaller. Column view will try to make reading multi-column documents more easy to read by essentially zooming in to view one column on the page at a time. Now, as you can see here, Sometimes the Ink Pad X does a really great job of guessing exactly where column text ends, and it can look really good. This mode also holds across the whole of the document until you switch it to a different one, which is pretty cool if your whole document is a two-column jungle gym to navigate. Tapping the column mode while it's already selected switches it to a three-column mode. While this is also cool in theory, it doesn't always work out entirely right. For reference, have a look at this column test PDF I cooked up. While the device does pretty well delineating between two columns on the first page, it doesn't do so well on the three column page when it's in the three column mode. You can manually adjust this while in these modes, but it likely won't fix the view mode for all columns. Just realize that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, so you may have to babysit the device a bit while using this mode. The last of these presets is the reflow mode. Essentially this mode breaks down the original formatting of the document and reformats or reflows the PDF to act more like an EPUB document on the device. For example, look at its effect on the document here. Whereas before it was a more rigidly formatted page with text and images in set positions, reflow mode means that, depending on the zoom level, the device will actively reflow the text and images to best fit the page. If the image takes up too much space, it will simply be placed on the next page. The trouble with reflow mode is that the formatting it changes was there for a reason. Pictures are often placed near a text that's describing what's pictured, page numbers are located in specific places on the page, and so forth. So while text size can be made more readable in this mode, some meaning can get lost because text and images are jumbled around from their intended positions. Also, I've observed that when trying to reflow an older image-based PDF, it often just doesn't work, or it can turn the text into nonsense. 
So there may be possibilities with this mode, but just know what you're getting into beforehand. Remember when I said that my favorite PDF improvement mode was coming up? Located just above these presets is a small icon of a scissors and a square. Tapping this brings up the margin cropping options on the device. The option to have the device essentially guess where is best to crop the page automatically is, in a word, amazing. With one tap, the device automatically trims all excess white space on the document, and this, again, is applied to all pages of the document and stays until you reset it. I've tried it on a variety of documents, and this mode has absolutely nailed every one of them. As you can see, the before and after difference is pretty drastic, and I just really can't adequately describe how right Pocketbook got this feature. Now, if you'd like to try a more custom zoom mode, then there's the manual mode. Tapping on this option brings up an image of the current page of the PDF document you're reading, along with an overlaid grid that you can slide to crop the page to your liking. Even just selecting the default cropping option can get you pretty close to the excellent automatic cropping option mentioned earlier. So as long as you want that particular cropping mode to apply to all pages of the document, this tool is pretty simple. However, the all pages setting at the top of the page can be changed to only apply to the current page you're on, or depending on what page you are on, only apply to even or odd pages. This is a really unique feature that, to my knowledge, is not natively featured on any other e-reader. It can be pretty useful if the particular document you're reading has some very peculiar formatting that varies every even or odd page. But just a warning here, what the user thinks is an odd or even numbered page, and what the device thinks aren't always the same. If you plan to use this mode, you'll have to have a good idea of what page the device thinks you're on, despite whatever the page number on the actual PDF document says. The next icon you see to the right of the crop selection options is the somewhat oddly named display section. Options here are pretty sparse and really all this allows you to do is to turn the device page number notifications and main device status bar on and off when you're in a PDF reading mode. So how well does the Inkpad X handle larger or more image intensive PDF documents? Actually, the answer is surprisingly well. Like with other tasks on the device, it can lag for no apparent reason, but usually it tends to preserve decently fast page turns. Even on this test I did with a 58.7 megabyte image heavy PDF. It's not the kind of consistent speed that you'll find on Sony's digital paper or the Onyx devices, but surprisingly, it can hold up to those devices pretty well at times. You can access notes via the main in-document menu. When you open the notes option, the device has a pop-up to explain the functions of each icon. I think it's a nice touch, but you can disable this so it doesn't pop up every time. First up, you have the marker option. This is basically just a highlighter tool, but it seems to only work on certain PDF documents. It's pretty finicky, and if you plan to use it on a scanned or image-only PDF, it simply may not work. The next door pencil tool lets you draw freehand on the document. If you don't like the size of the line, tapping the pencil icon again pops up a line thickness selection menu that gives you five options to choose from. 
Selecting the pencil icon with the plus sign next to it seems to try to create a new layer or grouping of scribbles together. The idea being that you can have several groups of scribble represented by one single glyph on the side of the page and that you can then cycle between these. But when you use the eraser tool, it becomes painfully clear that this just doesn't work. The eraser erases all lines you move your finger over, regardless what layer or grouping they're in. On the plus side, the undo and redo arrows work pretty well. The screenshot tool, represented by the camera icon here, allows you to take a picture of the current page you're on. While this is interesting, I'm wondering if Pocketbook just included this feature to make up for the device's very poor export performance. As you can see here, the screenshot tool can be a bit finicky at times. Sometimes this just takes a bit of patience. The only use that comes to mind is if you wanted to change scribbles you had made to a page, but wanted to save the previous version and then use the screenshot feature to do that. Once you take the screenshot, you can tap the icon that appears on the side of the screen to see a thumbnail of the screenshot in document, and you can then choose to either comment the screenshot edit it, or delete it. Lastly, you have the Table of Contents Quick Access icon. Tapping this will display the pages where you've made your scribbles and annotations. In case you're wondering, you can still flip back and forth through the document while you're in the note mode. That's always a welcome feature and it's really good to see that Pocketbook included this here. On the downside, every time you add an annotation to the page you're working on, a small square icon indicating the presence of that particular annotation will show up at the side of the screen. Depending on the document, these icons may start to obscure important text on the page if they add up. Exporting your annotations off the Inkpad X is anything but straightforward. As you can see, looking at the main in-document menu on the Inkpad X, there is no simple export shortcut. Once you've made your annotations on the device, you then need to go back out to the main menu. From the main menu, you need to open the list of apps. In here, you need to select the Notes app. Once you're in the Notes app, you'll be prompted to select the document you want to export your annotations from. After this, tap Export to export your notes. When you plug the Inkpad X into a computer, you can access the exported file by going to the Notes folder or whichever folder you select to save it to on the device. Bizarrely, the Inkpad X exports your notes to an HTML file. Yes, you heard that right, to an HTML file. I really can't fathom the logic behind this, and I have to think that this was either the product of lazy programming, or it was just simply a mistake on Pocketbook's part. I mean, why not export an actual separate copy of the PDF with the markups and annotations as another PDF file? 
that would be a whole heck of a lot more useful to most users. Besides just being strange, the format of these exports isn't all that useful. You just get bland descriptions like pencil and what page that marking was on. Not very helpful. You don't even get an image of your annotations unless you bothered to take a screenshot of those earlier. Thankfully, at least the screenshot function and the comment ability do work. Highlighted text is simply copied from the source document with a mention of what page it came from. Having seen much better export functionality on the Sony Digital Paper devices and the Onyx Books line, I have to say that this feels very much like an afterthought on Pocketbook's part, and this really is one of the most damning strikes against the InkPad X.